So this is part three, seeding the final restorations when you're veneering dar a dark central incisor. And as we discussed, this is a brutal case. There's hardly anything worse than a single, than either restoring a missing central incisor or restoring a dark central incisor. So here's the patient returning. We bleached the adjacent teeth, fabricated the provisional restorations on the two centrals. As I discussed in previous videos, I never do just one central. I never restore just one central unless it's some old farmer that just got off a tractor and it's just him and the cattle. If it's somebody that's particular about the way things look, I always restore the adjacent central, even if there's nothing wrong with the adjacent central, because you're, you're just not going to be able to match that tooth to that tooth if you're not restoring this one, or if you're not restoring both of them. Again, we're about 11 millimeters, that's perfect. So we're going to anesthetize the teeth with the painless and profound injection. And then I'm going to use this mosquito diamond to cut between the veneers so I can torque them and they'll come right off. Now you'll notice here in a minute where the etch was, that part is not going to pop right off. And sometimes you've got to prep that a little bit. That's why you don't want to get that etch all over the tooth when you're seating provisionals. If you get it all over the tooth, you might have to reprep the whole tooth. It's no big deal if you have to prep just a little bit, reprep a little bit right in the center of the facial. These are on so well with that etch that it's hard to get it off. See, it's sticking right here in the center. Right there's where the etch was. So it's a question mark, do you use etch or not? If you need just a little more retention, probably the learning point on this, if I, if I did that again, I'd probably just use a little tiny dot and not, even though that wasn't a big dot, it was enough that this is hard to get off. I probably didn't need any etch at all to get it off. So once I've, once I've removed it as well as I can, I'm gonna take a coarse football diamond and just reprep this part right here just ever so lightly to be sure all the, the filled resin and the provisional bisacrylate is off the tooth. Then I'm gonna pumice, with a profi cup and pumice mixed with water. Get any little remnants of the adhesive off the tooth. Now I'm gonna wipe them with isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball. Be sure to put a two by two in the mouth. That little bit of isopropyl alcohol is not gonna harm the patient, but you still wanna put a two by two in the mouth because you don't want it dripping back there. It tastes awful. And that's through the final cleaning, especially at the gingival line where that pumice may not be able to get down in there with the Profi cup. So this is a solid model. Now this is how you perfect the interproximal contacts of veneers or crowns with a solid model. And this is a dye model. I'm trying the veneers on the teeth, be sure everything fits ideally. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the veneers on the teeth and see how the shade blends with the adjacent teeth. In this case, the blend is very good. So I'm probably gonna just lighten them just a hair, just a hair. So I'm gonna use either a B1 or a transparent shade just to barely lighten them, but that's a good, that's a good mix. This is a really hard shade match because of the dark tooth and the fact the adjacent teeth are a little bit, uh, yellow. So I'm going to wipe the tooth again with isopropyl alcohol and then I'm going to apply the 38% phosphoric acid. Now not only does the 38% phosphoric acid etch the teeth, it also is a fantastic hemostatic agent. If you've got any bleeding, put some 38% phosphoric acid on it for 45 seconds and it'll stop the bleeding 99% of the time. Be sure when you rinse it off though, don't rinse it off with your air water syringe or you'll break the scab and elicit bleeding again. Use a water bottle with a large tip and ice cold water in the water bottle to rinse off the phosphoric acid. So somebody asked a while ago, what if you have dentin exposed? Well, you, there's no limit to how long you can etch enamel, but you only want to etch dentin for about 15 seconds. So what you would do if there was exposed dentin, you'd put the etch on the enamel first and on any bleeding areas of the gum and leave that for about 30 to 45 seconds. Then 
you'd come back and put etch on the dentin and only etch the dentin for about 15 seconds. Then once that 15 seconds is up, rinse it all off with the ice cold water in the water bottle with a large tip so you don't put a lot of pressure on it. See, I'm gonna suction this off, squirting the ice cold water on the tooth. You can see how the bleeding has scabbed over. And then these veneers have been etched with 8% hydrofluoric acid in the lab. And then that's been placed in a ultrasonic to get rid of the chalky layer. Very important that that, that happens. So if they come to me, the chalky layer is not on the two side of the veneer. If the chalky layer is on the two side of the veneer, you know the technician has not put it in an ultrasonic to get rid of that. Do you want to be sure to get rid of that? You don't have to etch them again. I'm just going to wipe them with that isopropyl alcohol to remove the any saliva or anything else. I do not use silane. It's not that it's a bad thing, it's just you don't need it. And I'll show you in this video why you don't. It's a form of contamination if you don't use it correctly. So I want these techniques to be very simple, very precise, and I want them to work every time. And I don't want you contaminating a technique by adding another step that you don't need. So this is Scotch Bond Universal Adhesive and Primer. So the primer adhesive goes on the two side of the veneer, then I'm going to blow all that excess off. Be sure you, there's nothing wiggling. You want to blow that off. The reason you want to blow it off is because it has either an, an alcohol or an acetone carrier. And if you don't blow it off, that alcohol or acetone stays in the primer adhesive and it can be a source of contamination. So blow it all off. Then applying the primer adhesive to the etched teeth. See how all the bleeding is controlled with the 38% phosphoric acid. Leave it on the bleeding gingival tissue for 45 seconds. Be sure you don't rinse it off with your air water syringe or you'll elicit bleeding again. Use a large water bottle with a large hole and ice cold water. Then I'm going to blow all this off onto a 2x2. Two two. Don't just blow it off into the mouth. It gets all over everything. Put a 2x2 two two right up next to the teeth and blow it onto the 2x2. Two two. Now in this case I'm using B0.5 because I wanted to make it just a tiny bit lighter. They were plenty good like they are, but a little bit lighter wouldn't hurt. So I'm using a, a slightly lighter looting composite that won't have a big influence on the final shade, but it will move it just a little bit to the lighter side. And you can refer to that YouTube video on shade matching uh, difficult cases. And I go through how you decide which looting composite you use based on what the veneers look like when you try them in. I never use try and paste. It's too messy and I don't think it's effective because I don't feel like you get the real shade of the looting composite until you cure it. And you're obviously not curing the try and paste. And then having to clean it out of the veneer and all that, I don't want to mess with it and you don't need to do it that way. I'm pushing this to place, don't cure it. See, and I'm transporting it with the cotton tip applicator with the red rope wax on the tip. That's a great transporter of crowns and veneers and pushing that to place then using the two cotton tip applicators to push them to place. Now, <clears throat> very important, I have not cured the primer adhesive on the teeth or on the tooth side of the veneer and I'm not curing the, the uh, filled resin on each individual tooth. That's a big mistake because when you cure it then you got to clean it off and you're very likely to elicit bleeding or the veneer may have swum just a little bit. They're very precise when you wrap the incisal and interproximal uh, sides of the teeth, but they could swim just a little bit. So you want the veneers themselves to guide the adjacent veneers to seating. So put them all on at the same time and then be sure they're set or seated comple uh, completely with the cotton tip applicators <clears throat> and I'll go back and forth and push them, push them, push them. And then I'll look at the 
veneers seated with a large occlusal mirror and be sure the arch alignment is ideal. And then look at them from the front and be sure the incisal plane is ideal. So I'll go back and forth, back and forth till nothing moves. Then I'm looking at them from the incisal edge to be sure that this is completely seated and I'll take a cotton ball on hemostats and just wipe just a little bit of each of these teeth right there at the incisal palatal line angle and be sure that the margin is perfectly seated and that this arch alignment is ideal. Then I'll push one more time and what that will do, it'll push out just a little of this filled resin or the uh, veneer looting composite where I've taken a little bit off on the palate and it'll be sure to fill that void completely. Now, see how quickly I cured that? Just boop and stop. If you go any longer, it'll set too hard. Then I'm going to cure the facial for about a thousand and one. Stop. The principle of this is you want to chip off or break off the excess composite. You don't want to wipe it off. You don't want to wipe off the looting composite. If you, there's a little tiny micro gap between the veneer and the tooth. There always is. It may be 25 microns if you have a very good veneer, good prep, good impressions, all that. Or it could be up to 500 microns if it's not so good. But there's always a little micro gap. Well, if you wipe off the unset looting composite, you're going to get a little suck back and you're going to have a void in that micro gap. It's going to pull some of that composite out of the micro gap and you'll have a void. Whereas if you cure it initially, not a long time, just in a case of two veneers, you're going to go boop, a thousand and one, stop on both the facial and the palatal. And then you can chip this off so that that micro gap is like a sandwich with the composite being like the ham and the lettuce and the tomatoes and all that. It's completely filled with looting composite so you don't have a void in the micro gap and you don't get stain, sensitivity, decay, and bacteria in that gap which causes irritated and red gingival tissue. See it just peels right off. Now I haven't set it completely. It's about like crunchy snow. So this is initial set only. And then I'm going to use the flat end of an amalgam carver to wipe off any primer adhesive or any uh, looting composite that's on the facial surface of the veneers. And then I'm going to pop floss between there to be sure that you can floss between the composites. Then I'm going to, I mean, between the veneers. Then I'm going to come back and cure each veneer for 60 seconds on each side. I'm going to use two curing lights, dueling curing lights. And I'm going to put one on the facial and one on the palatal. And I'm going to cure them each one for 60 seconds. That's probably over cure, but you can't over cure a composite looting a veneer. So I want to be sure it's completely cured. Then I'm going to come back with a large fine chamfer diamond and remove any of the excess composite from the palatal. Then this is a flame shaped diamond and then I'm also going to use a 12 fluted carbide burr and do my fine sculpting. And I'm going to take that 12 fluted carbide burr, high speed, lots of water, and go very gently around the margins on the facial just to remove any little bit of excess uh, looting composite or primer adhesive. Then I'm going to floss them, check the occlusion, and then once I've adjusted my occlusion I'm going to come back with the Shofu rubber wheels, these gray wheels, and that's excellent for the fine polishing. It removes any excess looting composite and also finishes it very nicely. And I'll drip water on that as I'm polishing. So here's a before and after. And I think that's a nice shade match of a very difficult case. See, we've lengthened the teeth just a tiny little bit, about a half a millimeter. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.